Good morning and welcome. Scripture lessons for this Sunday turn our attention to end times and specifically uh, how we ought to be prepared to meet Jesus. The first lesson uh, from Amos, uh, God speaks of uh, those who are uh, even in the church but are not prepared to meet him and so they ought to fear the day of the Lord. And Jesus also picks up on that thought in the parable of the ten virgins, which we'll consider for the sermon this morning, uh, asking ourselves, are you prepared to meet the bridegroom? Do you have enough oil for your lamp to light the the flame of faith? The order of service is printed in full in the service folder, and we'll begin by singing him, uh, Lo, he comes with clouds descending. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the presence of Christ among us in word and sacrament, 
let us call to mind our sins and confess them to Almighty God. Let us pray. I, a poor sinner, plead guilty before God of all sins. I have lived as if God did not matter and as if I mattered most. My Lord's name I have not honored as I should. My worship and prayers have faltered. I have not let his love have its way with me, and so my love for others has failed. There are those whom I have hurt and those whom I have failed to help. My thoughts and desires have been soiled with sin. I am sorry for all of this and ask for grace. I want to do better. God be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe that my forgiveness is God's forgiveness? Let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, send forth your Son to lead home his bride, the church, that with all the company of the redeemed we may finally enter into his eternal wedding feast through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost is from Amos, the fifth chapter. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Why would you have the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light, as if a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand against the wall and a serpent bit him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feasts, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offerings of your fattened animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs. To the melody of your harps, I will not listen. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. 
For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us confess our faith using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
name of Jesus, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Fall is a season for preparation, of course, from uh, cars to cottages. You got to get things ready for the winter, which is just around the corner. Some things have to get done, or, or you might, before the snow flies, or you might find yourself, when it does, uh, unprepared, unready, and uh, having a lot of headaches to deal with, getting things undone that should have been done, or done that sh should have been done. Remember last year when it snowed on Halloween, took everyone by surprise, and now we're probably lulled into this complacency because it's been the 70s. For several days. Today will be a beautiful day and tomorrow, but you got to be ready. Fall's a time for preparation in the gospel for today. Jesus tells a, a parable about being prepared for the last day, a day when he comes back to earth for, second, for the second time in judgment and takes his believers, his church, into the marriage feast of heaven. The point is, be prepared to meet the bridegroom. The question is, are you prepared? Are you ready? Are you ready for the bridegroom? Let's uh, take a look at this parable and, and get to thinking about those questions so you can answer it for yourself. Because some are prepared and some are not. Now this parable makes a comparison to marriage that we've got to learn about marriage customs back then to help us today because the way people celebrated marriage then is different than what we celebrated today, although there are similarities. So back in, in first century uh, Judaism, uh, there were really two ceremonies or, or, or two occasions, celebrations. The first was called a betrothal where the groom and the bride officially became husband and wife, but they didn't start living together as husband and wife. They had the rights, uh, they had the responsibilities of marriage, but not all the, the rights of marriage. The groom would spend time getting a, a house ready for his bride, while the bride would, would get ready to make that house a home. Sometimes the betrothal period could take up to a year before they could come together as husband and wife and enjoy the, the rights of, of marriage. So, after everything's ready, there'd be a second ceremony, and that's the celebration when the couple begins living together in the new home that they've prepared. First, the ceremony would start at the groom's house, and he'd send out a messenger to his bride to say, I'm ready, I'm going to come and get you, let's go, let's celebrate. And his family and his friends would go in a procession to the bride and the groom's new house. If the groom and the bride lived in the same town, well, that procession wouldn't take very long. But, of course, if they lived in different towns, well, it could take some time. Because travel wasn't as, as, uh, as regular or, or predictable as we have today, of course. Um, the, the groom might ride on a donkey. The, everyone else is, is walking uh, by foot. And there could be delays. There often were delays before the groom would arrive to pick up his bride. In fact, there was no telling when, when they might arrive at the bride's house. In the meantime, the messenger would arrive because he's running ahead of everyone else. He tells the watchman at the gate, watch for the bridegroom. He's going to be coming. And then give the, the, the shout, the command that he's coming and we can come out to meet him. And he would tell the family and friends that they should get the bride ready because... It's time for her to go to their new home. Anticipation builds. Everything's ready and waiting. And you've got to wait and wait. Normally, the watchmen are looking for danger out on the horizon, but when they see the bridegroom coming, it's a joyful occasion. The groom is here! And the bride's family and friends would join the procession. The couple would go to their new home, and everyone would celebrate a marriage reception that could last up to a week. Now that sounds like fun. Now, in this parable particularly, uh, Jesus focuses on the partiers, the people who were prepared to, to get to the marriage feast, the, bride, the, bridegroom's, the bride's bridesmaids, 
the virgins. Five were, fi five were wise, five were foolish. Now, at first, all of them are ready for the groom to arrive. But then Jesus said that the groom was delayed, and that can happen. In fact, it was the norm rather than the exception. And that delay separated the wise virgins from the foolish ones. The wise were prepared. They brought extra oil for their lamps. The foolish did not. And so when the groom arrived, they ran out. So the wise virgins joined the community in the grand procession to the new home of the bride and the groom and the wedding feast. The foolish missed out. In fact, they were shut out from the celebration because they arrived later. Let us in. Lord, Lord, we're here. And the groom would say, I don't know who you are. You're not coming in. They were locked out. So what does this mean? Well, of course, uh, as often in Scripture, God describes heaven like a marriage feast. We all can understand that. We've all gone to wedding receptions, and the joy of the ceremony and the day and the bride and the couple is just fantastic and, and joyful. In this case, the Christ, of course, is the groom, the bridegroom, and, and the bride is the church. But what about the virgins? Who are they? Why are they virgins? Well, they're, they're the bridesmaids. They were virgins because they weren't married. They, didn't, they weren't together with the husband, so they were virgins. And they're, they're, they're waiting for the bridegroom to arrive with everyone else. They're ladies in waiting, if you will, helping out the bride, attending to her needs, getting her ready, primping and priming. And they're waiting, just like everyone else. We, as individuals in the church, are the ladies in waiting. Whether you're male or female, we're waiting for the bridegroom Jesus to come on Judgment Day and usher us into the grand wedding feast of heavenly bliss and celebration. Some of us are wise and some of us are foolish. Hmm. The foolish are not ready for the wait, and so they're not prepared. The wise are prepared to meet Jesus, just in case the wait is longer than expected. They're not going to run out of oil. Now, we're waiting. We're, we're supposed to be waiting. We're the ladies in waiting. So this is not speaking of unbelievers. The virgins don't represent humanity. They represent members of the church. They represent you and me. Jesus is talking about those in this parable who claim a place in the church and ought to be among the faithful, waiting for Jesus to return. You and I are the virgins. The question is, are you wise or are you foolish? Because it's been a long wait, 2,000 years. And the fact of the matter is, the crowd isn't as large as it once was. There are fewer virgins waiting for Jesus because they've run out of oil and they're not going to be there when the door is shut to the celebration. They've given up and gone away. They didn't expect the wait to be so long, so their flames went out. Now there's a lot of details in the parable that we can't make direct par par uh, parallels to in the spiritual realm. You know, who's selling oil at midnight? Uh, all of the virgins fell asleep and, and got drowsy. What, what does that mean? But we can see that it's important to have enough oil so that your flame doesn't go out. Well, the flame of, is faith, is it not? Don't we, we speak of people being inflamed with passion or, or that we sing the VBS little ditty, this little gospel light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. The flame is faith. The foolish virgin's faith went out because they didn't have enough oil. What is it that, that fuels faith, that enables you to believe in Jesus and be ready for Jesus when he comes, that keeps your faith alive so that you are prepared? Well, it's the gospel, the gospel message. Getting into your ears and therefore into your heart. The gospel message, which you take in through your mouth, Jesus' body, very body and blood in Holy Communion, that is what is the fuel that keeps your faith alive. 
This parable tells us to be ready for Jesus returning in glory, to bring us to the wedding feast. Some are foolish, some are wise. Are you foolish or are you wise? There are some who claim a place in the church, ought to be among the faithful, waiting for Jesus to return, but they haven't stocked up on fuel to keep their faith alive. And so it will run out. And so when they expect to get into the heaven, they expect to get into the marriage feast, they won't get in because they have nothing that fueled their faith. Their, their flame went out. You see, those are the people who are lured away and get bored with waiting. And they don't avail themselves of what keeps their faith alive. They don't avail themselves of hearing the gospel preached into their ears, of receiving Jesus' body and blood and holy communion to keep their nourishment of spirituality alive, Jesus inside of them. And so when the bridegroom comes, they'll be missing out. These are harsh words, of course. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, oh, God says through Isaiah that he'll never snuff out a a smoldering wick or break off a, a bent reed. And, and that's true, very true. That's gospel, good news. But of course you know that scripture is also law, which is God's threats and his, punish, and his punishments of his, his, uh, his encouragements that you better shape up or you won't make it in. Listen to Isaiah and, and how God is saying, I, I hate your, your feasts and your festivals and your, your sham worship. You think you're all doing it because you're pleasing me and earning your place with me rather than receiving me by faith. I, don't, I want it. You're, you're, you're going to be sadly mistaken on the last day. This is a threat from Jesus that we might wake up and plead for his mercy and rely on his grace and avail ourselves of where he says he will be to fuel our faith in his word and his sacraments. There was a time Jesus said similar words to the prophets. These are the guys who should know better. These are the guys who were on the A-team of believers. And yet Jesus said that you will have no place with me in heaven. And they'll say, as they stand on the outside of his kingdom. Lord, didn't, didn't we prophesy in your name? And didn't we cast out demons in your name? And didn't we do mighty works in your name? And Jesus tells his disciples, I'll, I'll say to them, I'll tell you, I never knew you. So if that's what happens to the prophets who relied on their good works, who didn't trust in Jesus' mercy and grace, how much more so all of us who are the ladies in waiting, who let the fuel run out who do not avail ourselves of God's gospel in word and sacrament. Faith runs out, and when Jesus comes again, we think we're in, but we're not, because we've failed to trust in him and his mercy. Our flame was not burning. Faith had been extinguished. So be ready for when the bridegroom comes. The readiness is faith. If you give up on God, or more importantly, the fuel that fans your faith, his word and sacraments, you let the fire go out because you've not tended to it, faithfully fueling it with his word and sacrament at the regular, with the regular fellowship of the saints, with the wise virgins, then, then you may find yourself one of the foolish ones who didn't come prepared and will be shut out of the celebration. It's not that there isn't enough oil to go around. It's here in this divine service offered regularly to avail ourselves of it. Even during COVID-19, there's plenty of oil for faith. If you feel uncomfortable receiving Holy Communion here or hearing sermons preached into your ears, well, we've got that YouTube channel now and I'm available anytime during the week to offer Holy Communion, socially distant, masked up, but receiving that which is never poisoned, Jesus' body and blood and Holy Communion. We need it. We need it like we need food, like we need air. Isn't that why Jesus said, I am the bread of life? Whoever eats of me, of this bread, will never grow hungry. And so we take his holy supper into ourselves so that like having a meal, we are nourished and strengthened and able to keep off sickness and be strengthened for service. So we need the fuel of the means of grace to keep our faith alive. 
And so we are prepared. Because Jesus is coming. He may come sooner than later for some of us, passing on unto judgment through death. But for many of us, as Paul said to the Thessalonians, he may come again in clouds of glory while we're still alive. But we encourage each other with the words that whether we are asleep in the Lord or alive in the Lord on the last day, we will be with the Lord forever. We encourage each other with these words so that we are prepared. Receive Jesus and his promises so that you are a wise lady in waiting, availing yourselves and ready for yourself with faith. On the alert right now for Jesus because you don't know when he's going to come. You don't know the day or the hour. So are you a wise or are you a foolish virgin? Are you one of the individuals of the wedding party who's ready to meet Jesus for the wedding feast with your faith alive and fueled with the gospel message in your heart? God grant that he give us each the wisdom of faith, the regular preparation of his word and sacrament so that we have on hand and inside the fuel that we need for eternal life. And by his grace and power, may we ever be alert for his coming again because it will be a joyful day. And we'll, we will be welcomed into the marriage feast of the Lamb forever in his presence, in his heavenly kingdom. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God that transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. The Lord is our help and our deliverer. Let us bring to him now our prayers and petitions that he may grant to us all things good and needful and guard us against all things evil and harmful. Respond to each petition of the prayer of the church by saying, Lord, have mercy. Please stand. That the Lord would rule over the darkness and shine his light over all the earth. That those from many nations may be united as one people through baptism and live together in faith by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord would grant us wisdom and courage that we may be prepared at all times to receive him when he comes in his glory and that we may not be distracted by earthly glories that fade away or disillusioned by earthly disappointments which will come to an end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the governments of the world and our leaders would act justly and with mercy, that we may be spared war and violence, and that we may use wisely and for the Lord's glory his gift of liberty and the abundant blessings he has poured out on our land. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord would give aid and comfort to the sick, the suffering, and those in their last days. And that he may grant healing according to his will and strength to bear up under the weight of loneliness or affliction. We pray especially today for Ed Hatley, who is hospitalized at St. Nicholas with COVID-19. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may not grieve as those who have no hope, that we may rejoice in the promise of the resurrection to life everlasting, and that we may encourage one another with these words. Especially we pray for the families of Jim and Linda Fleck. Remember with thanksgiving today, Linda's mother, Helen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may find a home within the house of the Lord here on earth, that we may rejoice in the Lord's word and sacraments by which we are brought to faith and nurtured in this faith, and that we may be sustained in the days of waiting, serving the Lord in anticipation of his return. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may be ready to receive the Lord when he comes again in glory, that the Lord may open the hearts of those who have wandered away from the faith, and that the Lord may restore those caught up in error's maze. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord may hear and answer the prayers of his people, and that we may be content with his answer, 
trusting in his fatherly will and wisdom to grant us all that we need and all that will profit our salvation. Let us pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Grant us your spirit, gracious Father, that we may give heed to the testament of your Son in true faith, and above all, firmly take to heart the words with which Christ gives to us his body and blood for our forgiveness. By your grace, lead us to remember and give thanks for the boundless love which he manifested to us, when by pouring out his precious blood, he saved us from your righteous wrath and from sin, death, and hell. Grant that we may receive his body and blood as a gift, guarantee, and pledge of his salvation. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank and praise you for feeding us the life-giving body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Send us your Holy Spirit, that having with our mouths received the Holy Sacrament, we may by faith obtain and eternally enjoy your divine grace, the forgiveness of sins, unity with Christ, and life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.